Well, hello again. Welcome again to another episode of Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded. And I'm your host, Irvish, and you're listening to Internet Radio. And today we're going to be finishing up uh, our study in the book of Jonah. And we're going to uh, look at a couple things in the book of Jonah, and Jonah 1, 2, and also 3, 2. Uh, and I'm going to title the uh, episode before and after Calvary. Now, when we looked at uh, the book of Jonah, we seen in uh, chapter 1, verse 2, Arise and go to Nineveh and cry against it. But then in Jonah 3, 2, it says, Arise and go to Nineveh and preach unto it. Now Jonah received two calls from God. He disobeyed the first, but the second he fulfilled. Between the two calls, Jonah had the most gruesome experience. He died in the belly of a fish and miraculously resurrected and then disposed on dry land. Note the difference in the two words in the two calls of God. Cry against it and preach unto it. Cry against it and preach unto it. The first message was a message of judgment, while the second message was a message of grace and mercy. It was also a call to repentance. Between the two calls, there lies the death and resurrection of Jonah, the message of grace and mercy after was after Jonah's resurrection. The same condition prevails before and after Calvary. The air uh, preceding the cross was one of judgment. The dispensation followed the cross was one of grace. What would it have been like if Christ had not come. Well, the Jews under the law and how the character of the law was displayed in a way it was given, uh, it stupefied, happy happenings, and despite the feelings of Moses, the law was given for one reason and one reason only, it wasn't that we should obey the law. Yeah, we should have tried, but we weren't capable of it. The law was given to show us we needed Christ, is what it was. The re revealing of the law was awesome, to demand perfection. You see that in Exodus 20. It's cruel and condemned. It disqualified the sinner. It banished man. Genesis, or I'm sorry, Galatians 3.16 says, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all the things that are written in the book of the law. The Jew before the cross had the judgment of God hanging over his head at all times. Moreover, he was banished from God's presence on account of his sin. Now listen to these examples. The golden calf, the judgment of the sons of Korath, the 250 men were buried with, or burned with fire. See number 16. The two sons of Aaron, Nahab and Abijah, in Leviticus 10. The judgment of Achim and his family, the men who gathered sticks on the Sabbath, Numbers 15, the sin of Marian, Moses, the sin of murmuring, punished by sending fiery serpents, Numbers 21. 
You know, we see the Jews as he sought to atone for his sin. He came over and over and over again with his sacrifice. There was no uh, response, no rest, no peace, no assurance. All the time the law kept thundering at him, the soul that in it shall die. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. His sins, however, was never removed. It was only covered between the judgment of God and themselves. There was the thin film of animal's blood. There was no security. Jonah 1 says, cry against it. That was the call. How would you like to have lived before the cross? You know, we see the point of Jonah 3, 2, which says, preach unto them. Uh, you know, Genesis three thirteen, which says, Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. This introduces us to the grace of God. The grace of God which brings salvation has appeared. John 1.17 says, The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. We find in John 1.14 the words, The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, full of grace and truth. Grace is unmerited favor. Romans 5.20 says, Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. We were rebels, sinners, and enemies. We walked according to the course of this world. We were sons of disobedience, held captive by the devil without God, without Christ, and without hope. We were helpless, useless, hopeless, we were the children of wrath. It was at this time when we were dead in our trespasses and sins that the richness of God's mercy and the greatness of God's love flowed towards us in Christ. We who were dead in trespasses and sins were made alive in Christ and now sit with him in heavenly places. Paul adds, for by grace you have been saved through faith, that it is not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Note the hymn Amazing Grace and the author John Newton notes uh, also uh, Jerry McCary. I am glad I live after the cross of Christ. I have forgiveness, peace, rest, assurance, and security. My sins is gone, never to be remembered again. Judgment is gone, and I am justified and clothed in the righteousness of Christ. I am his masterpiece. You know, it says that he will cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. How far is that? It's infinity. He can and refuses to remember them anymore. He chooses not to remember our sins. Dear unbelieving friends, if you're not a Christian and you are listening to this message, Aren't you glad you live on this side of the cross? Would you like to be a benefactor of the grace, mercy, and love of God? Well, the only way to do it is come now as a repentant sinner and receive Christ as your Savior. And the Bible says that you might be saved. No, it says, you will be saved. There's salvation, but only in the cross of Christ.
And this ends our study in the book of Jonah.